Good day everyone, I am Eliza and today we are going to discuss about poultry coccidiosis. So for our discussion today, we are going to talk about the following contents. So let's start with introduction. So poultry coccidiosis is one of the most important disease in poultry animals because it generates great economic lo losses due to mortality reduced body weight, plus the expenses related to preventative and therapeutic control. Poultry coccidia are generally host-specific, and this different species parasitize specific parts of the intestine. However, in game birds, including quail, the coccidia may parasitize the entire intestinal tract. Coccidia are distributed worldwide in poultry, game birds reared in captivity, and wild birds. So this coccidial infection is also self-limiting. So there are nine species of Imeria that have been described to infect Gallus gallus variety domesticus at various locations along the intestinal tract. So here are the nine species of Imeria, E. acervolina, E. brunetti, E. hagani, E. maxima, E. mitis, E. mivati, E. necatrix, E. prycox, and E. tenella. So except E. hagani and E. mivati, the other species of Imeria causes clinical coccidiosis. So the life cycle of coccidia. The life cycle of coccidia is short and starts with the bird ingesting sporulated oocysts. So it starts with in the ingestion of the oocysts. So the sporulated oocysts contains four sporocysts, each containing two sporocytes, so four sporocysts and two sporocytes. And the mechanical and acidic environment in the gut of the bird, of the poultry animal, results in the release of these sporocysts and sporozoites into the gut. The sporozoites invades the duodenal mucosa. They first invade the duodenal mucosa epithelial cells before undergoing phases of growth and multiplication. So they first invade the duodenal mucosa, uh, the epith epithelial cells, before undergoing with growth and multiplication with periodic release of merozoites into the gut. So next, the merozoites the, develop within the duodenal cells as gametes in form of both macro and micro gametocytes. This develops into a zygote and then an oocyst which is shed in the feces. So when the birds, when the poultry animals poop, the oocyst are shed in the feces. These oocysts require moist conditions to undergo sporulation, a process that requires oxygen and takes about 24 hours at which point they become infective. So here is the life cycle of coccidia. So it starts when the oocyst is inject ingested by another bird, by bird, by a bird, then the parasites enter the intestinal bird, intestinal cells of a bird and multiply, the multiplication happens, and the parasites continue to multiply until female and male parasites make new oocysts. So the infected bird spread oocysts or protective capsule containing the parasites. So they poop, they shed the, this oocyst in their feces, and then the transmission uh, grad, uh, uh, the on the there will be transmission of the um, coccidia in the in poultry animals. So here is another one. Um, it is the same as to what I explained earlier. So for the transmission in young chickens, young chickens can be contaminated, can be infected with. Oh, um, with coccidia through con contaminated premises such as soil, the houses, utensils, and etc. They can, they can, uh, chickens or port 
poultry animals or birds can also be um, infected with um, with coccidia through wet areas around water fountain so they dwell on the um, around the water fountain so oocyst remains viable in litter for months diba sabi kanina when there is um, heat humidity and oxygen they can live so oocyst are killed can be killed by freezing extreme dryness and high temperature so diba they need oxygen humidity and uh, oxygen humidity and heat so predisposing factors high stocking density um, bad quality litter and lighting schedule anti-nutritional factors or anfs in the feed brooder and grower management overcrowding so overcrowding can also cause the transmission of um coccidia in the um in the birds so number of oocysts ingested by the bird and strain of coccidia so eto number of oocysts ingested by the bird so um if there is if there is um too many uh, oocysts inside the bird then they can be infected with coccidia so ito yung sinasabi na number of oocysts ingested and strain of coccidia. Meron kasi mga strains na um, not as uh, high, hindi sila high virulent as those of other strains. So, environmental factors affecting the survival of oocysts. Yun kanina, they need heat, the humidity, and oxygen. So, they can um, they can also uh, um, season, it can also, the season of the month can also influence the growth of oocysts of this coccidia site of development within the host diba? they live in the intestines and nutritional status and age of the host so pathogenesis three to six weeks old chicken can can already be infected with oocysts so diba naga matter ang age so most virulent strains can cause diarrhea Increase in flock mortality, mortality. less vir virulent strains um, causes poor growth and uh, decrease feed efficiency. Pathogenicity depends on a number of factors. A. The number of host cells destroyed per infecting oocysts, which depends upon the number of megazoid generations and number of megazoids per generation. Uh, second, location of the parasite in the host tissues and within the host cells. So, uh, next, the size of the infecting dose or doses, the degree of reinfection, and lastly, the degree of acquired or natural immunity of the host. So, the most common and pathogenic form of disease is sacral coccidiosis caused by E. tenella followed by intestinal coccidiosis caused by E. necatrix. So, pinaka common coccidiosis, most common and most pathogenic form is the secal coccidiosis caused by E. tenella and followed by the intestinal coccidiosis caused by E. necatrix. So, diba meron tayo? Nine, uh, nine strains of Imeria that are that can cause, uh, that can infect Gallus Gallus variety domesticus. So, seven of those are, um, can cause clinical coccidiosis. Well, the, uh, among those seven, here the Etanella and Enecatrix are the most common and pathogenic form of the disease. So, Enecatrix and Tenella are the most pathogenic in chickens. Because schizogony occurs in the lamina proparia and creeps of the burkun of the small intestine and seca respectively and causes in extensive hemorrhage. So most species develop in epithelial cells lining the villi. So clinical signs of coccidiosis in poultry. So there is a decreased feed and water consumption. 
there is also decreased growth rate with high percentage of visibility, visibly sick birds. There is weight loss um, on, the, on the birds, weight loss in birds, severe diarrhea or bloody diarrhea, development of calls, decreased egg production, and high mortality. So, there will be also mild infection, which are subclinical, that may cause depigmentation and potentially lead to secondary infection, particularly Clostridium species infection. So, survivors of severe infections recover in 10 to 14 days but never recover loss per 4 months. So, there is there will be a decreased performance. Lesions, lesions are present along the intestinal tract and often have a distinctive location and appearance that is useful in diagnosis along the intestinal tract. So, sacral coccidiosis, diba? Sacral coccidiosis caused by etanella. So, it is characterized by accumulation of blood in the seca. There, there will be bloody droppings. Sacral cores, which are accumulations of clotted blood, tissue debris, and oocysts may be found in birds surviving the acute stage. So, gross lesion of etanella with frank hemorrhaging into the sacral pouches in a broiler chicken. So, here is the sacral of, sacral of, sacral pouch of, um, a broiler chicken. Next, we have intestinal coccidiosis, the second second most common and pathogenic coccid uh, disease caused by E. necatrix. This species species of Imeria is highly pathogenic in chickens, and it is often seen in birds from nine to fourteen weeks of age. Mortality, severe weight lo losses, and feces with blood and mucus are frequent findings. So, ito, intestinal coccidiosis in the intestines. There, uh, there are also small white spots, usually intermingled with rounded, bright, or dull red spots of various sizes. It can be seen on the cerosal surface. This appearance is sometimes described as the salt and pepper. The white spots are diagnostic for enecatrix if clumps of large schizons can be demonstrated microscopically. In severe cases, the intestinal wall is thickened, the infected area is dilated to 2 to 2.5 times the normal diameter. Lumen filled with blood mucus and fluid. And there will be also marked dehydration. So although the damage is in the small intestine, the sexual phase of the life cycle is completed in seca. Oocysts of e necatrix are found only in the seca. Because of concurrent infections, oocysts of other species may be found in the area of major lesions misleading the diagnostician. So, next, we have the rectal coccidiosis caused by E. brunetti. So, in the rectal, uh, in the rectum. E. brunetti is found in the lower small intestine. Uh, rectum, seca, and cloaca. So, diba? We have the small intestine. Tapos, ito yung seca. Kanina, ito ang rectum. In the moderate infections, the mucosa is pale and disrupted but lacking in discrete foci and may be thickened. In severe infections, coagulative necrosis and sloughing of the mucosa occurs throughout most of the small intestine. So this is a cross lesion of E. brunetti in small intestine in broiler chicken. So we have another one that Imeria maxima, which develops also in the small intestine, where it causes dilation and thickening of the wall. Petechial hemorrhage, reddish, orange, or pink viscous mucus, exudate, and fluid. So the mid-gut often has numerous whitish pinpoint foci, and the area may appear engorged. So 
um, here are um, the different species, the lesions, and clinical signs. So we have the E. acervulina, uh, the lesions, lesion, it causes our numerous whitish transverse patches in the upper half of the small intestine. So clinical signs includes poor growth, increase in cause, and slightly increased mortality. E. mitis causes pathogen is pathogenic in the lower small intestine and lesions are indistinct resemble moderate infections of E. brunetti so it in it uh, resembles infections of E. brunetti so E. praecox infects the upper small intestine does not cause distinct lesions watery intestinal context so a uh, content so it is uh, less economically important than those other um those other uh, species of Imeria. So we have here a table showing the site development, pathogenicity, and disease type of um, different species of Imeria. We have the E. tenella and E. necrat necratrix um, um, with the most highest pathogenicity among all the um, among the all the Imeria that. Uh, causes clinical coccidiosis, so followed by Brunetti, Maxima, Mitis, Acervulina, and lastly the Precox. So the three, the Necrotic, Stenella, and Brunetti, are hemorrhagic disease type, and the other four are malabsorbative. So here is a picture showing uh, the gut locations of the um, disease. So for the diagnosis, the location in the host, appearance of lesions, and the size of oocysts are used in determining the species present. So location, appearance of lesion, and the size of oocysts. Yan yung uh, ginagamit to determine the species na present doon sa bird. So, coccygeal infections are readily confirmed by demonstration of oocysts in feces or intestinal scrapings. So, they can be confirmed by by one, getting a fee, uh, getting a sample from the feces or number two, intestinal scrapings. So, however, the number of oocysts present has little relationship to the extent of clinical disease. So here is another picture showing the different um, characteristics of the nine species of chicken coccidia. So we have the Cervulina, Brunetti, Maxima, Mitis, Mivati, Necrotic, Spry, Cox, Tenella, and Hagani. Hagani, which does not cause clinical coccidiosis. So prevention and treatment. So there are methods of coccidiosis prevention or treatment. Isa na dito is coccid coccidicides, another is coccidiostats, and number three is vaccines. So, cox coccidicides are preventive program used usually aim for eliminating imeria completely from the gut by using coccidicides that kill the parasites. This results in optimal condition of the gastrointestinal tract improving body weight and reducing feed conversion to kill completely the, uh, the parasite present in the gut. Yan yung goal or aim ng coccidicides to eliminate, to kill. Coccidiostats in breeders and layers, a different approach is usually needed. So, Di siya same ng um, approach in all the ages of chicken. So, in breeders and layers, uh, due to the relatively long life cycle of these birds, development of protective immunity is desired. For this purpose, a minimal degree of exposure to Imeria is allowed. To achieve this objective, coccidiostats are used to arrest the development of parasites at different stages of development allowing for a good balance between intestinal damage and appropriate exposure for, for immunity development. Of course, once the coccidiostats are withdrawn from the diet, 
the infecting parasite may resume their life cycle, producing clinical manifestations of the disease. So, for our treatment, we have sulfonamides. We can also use... So, sulfonamides, muna siya ang usually ginayused in treatment of coccidia in poultry animals. So, we also have sulfodimethoxine, sulfaquinosaline, sulfamethazine, that should not be used in layer hands. So, treatments, ionophores, we can use ionophores, and other chemicals. So, uh, presented in the screen are the examples of ionophores and other chemicals and their mechanism of action, such as to disrupt the ion gradient across the parasite cell, inhibition of parasite mitochondrial respiration, inhibition of folic acid pathway, competitive inhibition of thiamine uptake, mode, uh, and inhibition of development of the first and second generations of the schizon stage of the parasites. For antimicrobial resistance, Imeria parasites do develop drug resistance due to regular use of drugs. So, uh, like us people, we also develop uh, drug resistance due to the um, due to regular use of drugs. So the resistance is greatly enhanced if the same family of antimicrobials is used for a long time within a defined area. So selective pressure will favor the few parasites within a population that are resistant, and within few rearing cycles, the initial parasite would increase their population size to numbers able to induce clinical disease in flocks. So, we have shuttle program. So, it is a way to fight against um, um, antimicrobial resistance. So, a common practice to par partially solve this problem is to use anti-coxidial shuttle programs that rotate through different periods of the bird's life. This method has a good chance of eliminating the parasites that demonstrated resistance to a single antimicrobial. A, a variation of the same principle consists on changing co coccidiostats between flocks. So most suitable drug is used for starter, while another drug is used for grower and finisher. Drug withdrawal period is the most important consideration for drugs that will be used in finisher feeds. So, examples of reasonable shuttles are Coban, which is Stenorol, Clinocox, an ideal winter program. For summer, we have also summer programs, winter or summer programs, such as Avatex, Stenorol, and Clinocox, which are all examples of um, shuttle, the shuttle program. So, we also have rotation program. First one, we have the shuttle program. Now, we have the rotation program. So, rotation means that the conscious decision is made to change the drugs used at a given time in the future. This is every four months after two crops, go to a winter and summer program, etc. The alternative to a rotation program is a continuous program where the same drugs are used independently indefinitely usually until a pro problem develops or until a new program product is introduced on the market shuttle programs fit into rotation programs so vaccines so immunity can reduce the pathogenic effects of coccidiosis such as less microscopically visible lesions decreasing of oocyst production and increasing performance of birds so, the first commercial live coccidiosis vaccine was Coxivac, which was registered in the USA in the year 1952. So, currently, two types of vaccines are used with the aim of controlling coccidiosis in a chemical-free way. We have the live non-attenuated vaccines and the live attenuated vaccines. So, the main risk of using live non-attenuated vaccines such as Coxivac, Advent, Immunocox, and Inovococ, is the live parasites that can develop a severe reaction in birds. So many times their use is accompanied by chemical treatments to control the inherent pathogenicity of the parasites. On the contrary, the success of live attenuated vaccines 
such as paracox and hatchback coxie, coxie 3 relies on the low risk of disease occurring because of the reduction in the proliferation of parasites and consequently a less damage in birds tissue so non attenuated and attenuated vaccines may have different routes of administration such as oral eye drops or in ovo in birds and sem several Imeria species as target so we have genetically engineered vaccines so genetically engineered subunit vaccines consist of purified antigenic determinants obtained from Imeria parasites so these vaccines are obtained from dna recombinant technology and may consist of native antigens or recombinant proteins of various stages such as the sporozoids merozoids and gametes of imeria distinct protective antigens used are micronemes rock trees refractile bodies merozoids and gam gametocytes of imeria parasites so they use um the um imeria parasites so coccidia uh, we have another um bird in the turkey so coccidia of turkey so there are generally seven species of coccidia infecting turkey so that e adenoides e dispersa e galopavonis e meliagrimitis e, e enoqua E. meliagridis and E. subrotunda. So E. enoqua, E. meliagridis, and E. subrotunda are considered non pathogenic. So three of the seven species of coccidia infecting turkeys are non pathogenic, while the other four, the E. adenoides, E. dispersa, E. galopovonis, and E. meliagrimitis, are pathogenic. So oocysts sporulate within one to two days after expulsion from the host. The prepatent period is four to six days. So, E. adenoides and E. galopavonis infect the lower ilium, seca, and rectum. So, it infects the lower ilium, seca, and rectum. So, these species often cause mortality. So, the developmental stages are found in the epithelial cells of the villi and crypts. The affected portion of the intestine may be dilated and have a thickened wall. So same dun kanina sa poultry, uh, poultry coccidiosis, uh, I mean coccidio, coccidia of chicken. So thick creamy materi material or caseous casts in the gut or excreta may contain enormous numbers of oocysts. So E. meliagrimitis chiefly infects the upper and mid small intestine. So kanina we have the uh, e. adenoides and galopavonis uh, in the ilium seca and rectum, while E. meliagrimitis affects the upper and mid small intestine. So the lamina, lamina proparia and deeper tissues may be parasitized, which may result in necrotic enteritis. It results in necrotic enteritis. So E. dispersa infects the upper small intestine and causes a creamy mucoid enteritis that involves the entire intestine, including the seca. So, large number of gametocytes and oocysts are associated with the lachon. So, common signs in infected flocks includes reduced feed consumption, rapid weight loss, droopiness, ruffled feathers, and several diarrhea. So, wet droppings with mucos are common. Clinical infections are seldom seen in poultry greater than 8 week old morbidity and mortality may be high so in ducks a large number of specific coccidia have been reported in both wild and domestic ducks so both pop, the both population of wild and domestic ducks can be um, infected with um, coccidia so presence of imeria venonella and tisaria species have been confirmed T. pernicosa is a known pathogen that balloons the entire small intestine with mucohemorrhagic or caseous material. So, T. pernicosa. Pathogenesis resembles E. necatrix. So, T. pernicosa resembles E. necatrix. 
In geese, the best known coccygeal infection of geese is that produced by E. truncata in which the kidneys are enlarged and studded with poorly circumscribed yellowish white streaks and spots. Yellowish white streaks and spots in the enlarged kidney. So the tubules are dilated with masses of oocysts or urets. Mortality may be high. At least five other Imeria species have been reported to parasitize the intestine of geese, but these are of lesser importance. So control by management practices. So maintain vigilance and treat as soon as first symptoms are seen. Keep different age group separate. So when you have a flock, you should keep different age group separate. So ensure that the litter is dry but not dusty. Avoid any causes of wet litter because oocysts can um, oocysts can um, can live on the litter. Keep litter dry around watering points. Do not allow drinkers to overflow. So ensure high standards of hygiene of personnel. Ensure good hygiene of feeding and drinking equipment. Keep raising the level of drinkers as chicken grows to reduce fouling. So, diba kasi um, Imeria species can be found on the soil. So, vaccinate if the risk of disease are high. So, that's it for my report. Thank you for listening.